Hello everyone and welcome to Man Overboard. Fitty ain't nothing but a number yo. With your host, Language Barrel, sponsored by the Wolf's Pact. America's by invitation only men support friendship and networking group. Where the one become many and the many become one. Here they put the man back in human. Again, everyone, welcome to today's show. Uh, we want to talk very briefly about uh, some issue, an issue, a specific issue that I've seen around uh, traveling to Colombia, especially for men. I have a very strong interest in traveling to Colombia, and so I've been seeing these vlogs about uh, this drug called scopolamine, the devil's drug, the zombie drug, the most dangerous drug in the world. And so I just want to provide some information and research to kind of clear up some things that I've seen and separate the facts from the urban legend. And sadly, what they say about men is still true to some extent, that if you want to hide information from men, put it in a book. Because men still don't do a lot of reading. We still rely on passing information the same way that our fathers and our forefathers did when the cavemen were here and we ran around loincloths. And that is via oral history or oral presentation. But hello, welcome to the information age where information is literally at your fingertips, in your pocket and on your wrist. There really is no excuse to be passing information that you haven't in some way verified or validated for yourself. It just takes a couple minutes to go to, onto a computer that's on your wrist as a watch or on your phone or in your pocket as a phone. But let's, let's not dwell on that. What I wanna talk about really is talk about this scopolamine again uh, the most deadliest drug in the world, or the zombie drug, right? Uh, basically, scopolamine is an anticholinergic drug used primarily in, um, in Western society for nausea and vomiting. It's typically administered as a transdermal patch that goes back uh, here behind your ear, and it's a long-lasting medication that, that's distributed over a long period of time via uh, subcutaneous absorption. Now, However, when they're talking about Colombia, this they're talking about people and men. It's specific men as a target. Western men who go there and attempt to meet very young women via online dating or some other uh, form of or dating where you don't really know the person, where you meet them and then either invite them back to your house or uh, invite them on a date. And so, typically, as I mentioned. It's normally uh, administered, medication is normally administered transdermally. However, in these cases, it's, admitted, it's administered orally, right? They slip something in your drink or uh, slip something in your food. And this is kind of like the way they did back in the old Navy days when they used to talk about Shanghai and someone where you slipped them a drug and then you just carted them off somewhere. This is also very similar to the date rate drug, um, that's being administered now to women. Now, one of the side effects, of, especially in the oral presentation, is that you can become uh, psychotic and you could, or you could have hallucinations. Now, one of the hospitals reported, there was a reported incident in one of the hospitals in Bogota, that actually the, the person that was administered this drug went, went, uh, had an incident of psychosis and actually attacked the person who um, was administering the, administering the drug to them. So you can become violent. Now, typically the side effects are that you become drowsy. And so here, when we start talking about the zombie vacation of the drug, now just a little backstory. I've been in, in working in medicine for the past 25 years as a nurse um, with a nursing, nursing background. And also in, I worked 12 years in pharmacology and biotechnology in the research and development department. Uh, testing, not testing new drugs, but really overseeing some of the trials for the test of new drugs. Now, in that 25 years, I have never heard of a drug having the capability to zombify someone. Because just from a legal standpoint, or you could imagine the exposure that a company would be open to if a drug had the capability to zombify somebody. So that's just not true. It's nonsense, I guess is just the way to put it. Now, what I will say, however, is that this drug, in, in your, in a, when you are 
under the influence of this drug, you may be extremely drowsy, right? And so you may be open to suggestions the same way you might be as if you were drunk or if you were high, but you weren't passed out, where someone may suggest something to you and you may be open to the suggestion, i.e., uh, e.g., uh, such as, uh, like, what is your PIN number or where you have your money? Now, whether or not you answer that is going to be dependent on your susceptibility to um, the influence of some type of medication, right? It's not going to, you're not going to be under their spell. Uh, the issue around this drug is that it does have some effect on the central nervous system. So there is a possibility, it's very likely that you will have blank spots in your memory about what happened with this drug. Now, my preliminary research, I didn't do a lot of research, but just looking around the web and looking at information. Uh, in Bogota, well, in, in Colombia, 50,000 cases have been reported of someone being scoped. That's my cat. It's a crazy cat. It's not even my cat. It's like my ex's and my daughter's cat that I'm cat sitting for. But he jumps in front of the, the phone. Now, that's him. I said they were, uh, scopo that they received scopolamine, they were robbed. Uh, obviously, this, if that's the number of cases, it probably is much higher because it's, I would imagine that the targets are very embarrassed that this happened to them. But there was a study done by a hospital, and of the, they, they actually studied 840 cases of the people that said they, were, they received scopolamine, and they tested their blood, their blood for traces. Now, the 840 men, men that were tested, primarily men, um, probably exclusively men, so of the 840 cases that were tested, only 12.5% had scopolamine in their system. Another 43% had benzodiazepine or benzos or like a Valium Xanax in their system. Uh, so what, the one caveat that, that they reference is that this scopolamine uh, generally stays in the system in detectable levels between 12 and 24 hours. So if they were tested after that period of time, it would not be detected. But the key takeaway point from that study is that 43% of men did have benzodiazepine or benzos in their system. So what that infers, or the inference, is that there was some other drugs uh, at work in, in uh, some of these cases. Now, just a little history of the drug. So this drug has been around for a while. There was actually some research that I said where it uh, referenced that Nazis had attempted to use this drug for interrogation purposes on Jews and on prisoners of war to gain vital information. Uh, also, in the early 20th century, there were um, there was a physician that was treating some uh, women for um, who were pregnant. So he was an OBGYN, and he noted that when he asked some very revealing questions, the women answered it, answered the questions. And so somehow this information got to police departments, and they attempted to use the drug as a truth serum drug. And it does not uh, that has no effect as a truth serum drug. So that was dispelled. And again, it has no capabilities as a zombie drug. However, you can be open to suggestions. And it is very likely that you will not remember what happened when this occurred. Now, there were some rumors that people could blow it in your face, kind of like the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom where the guy blew powder in the person's face and the person's kind of like a zombie. Or that they can put it on a business card and you touch the business card and now you're zombified. I... I, I I hesitate to even really address that because it just seems so nonsensical, really. And just from a legal standpoint, you can just imagine the, the exposure to a company that would create a drug like this and sell it uh, on an open market for any purposes, right? Um, it just, it's just, just doesn't make any sense. So I'm not gonna really address that. It's just not possible. Some uh, One of the places that I, I wanna give a shout out to the Medellin guru, because uh, that person did actually some extensive, if you get to go to that site and look up scopolamine, he has a very extensive article on uh, the drug scopolamine, it's, it's, its prescribed uses, some of the side effects, and then he really also talks about uh, debunking this, this uh, urban uh, mystification of scopolamine as a zombie drug. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for your time. 
I hope this has provided some useful benefit to men who are traveling to uh, Colombia or just traveling the world in general. And uh, no matter where you travel, you really just have to be aware of your environment and you have to travel smart and travel safe. Okay, that's it for this episode. As in closing with most of our episodes, we'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom or a little poetry. Como una lesiana gar en la noche la verdad puede su fácil de encontrar, pero de difícil de mantener a la luz de diez. Like a firefly at night, truth may be easy to find, but hard to keep during the light of day.